Hey guys, just want to make a quick video, and <clears throat> right now I've kind of got a sore throat. I don't know why, but hopefully it goes away soon. Um, probably maybe because I worked yesterday in the sleet and stuff. I don't know. I don't really feel too sick, though. <clears throat> just my throat hurts. But uh, it actually doesn't really hurt that much, but now it's just kind of there. But anyways, I read a little bit through the book of Revelation last night, the book that I bought about Revelation. And I looked at chap the Revelation chapter 11 because I was interested in the two witnesses and stuff. And I was thinking that's something that, you know, the futurists always talk about. Like, who are the two witnesses? And for some reason, you know, people want to apply that to Elijah and, and Enoch or Elijah and Moses. And uh, I remember someone even asked me not that long ago who I thought it was. And I was like, oh, I think it's Elijah and Moses, you know. And I've made a video on that, actually, and I'm going to have to delete that because I think that's just not true at all. And I know that there's some things that are that are based on that, like uh, there's a scripture in the Old Testament that talks about Elijah coming again. But then we see in the New Testament that Jesus says that John the Baptist is Elijah. But then there's this thing called uh, double fulfillment prophecy, which I used to believe in, but I'm not so sure that that's true anymore either. That kind of goes along with dispensationalism. And they say that, you know, sometimes prophecies are fulfilled in a spiritual sense, but then there's also a future physical literal sense that they're actually going to be fulfilled physically and literally. So they would say, well, yeah, John the Baptist was in the spirit of Elijah, but Elijah will return also, so there's also a dual fulfillment yet to come. And they'll say that's the two witnesses, you know. But I really don't think that there's anything that's tying these two witnesses to anybody, okay? Okay. Like I said, we kind of need to separate <coughs> the book of Revelation like that. I mean, people try to, I don't know. Anyways, I was interested in what the idealist interpretation was. And the idealist said basically that the two witnesses are the church. And why are there two of them? And this is what I really thought was really interesting. And it kind of struck me like, wow. And he gives like five different verses to show this. And you'll know this if you've read the Bible. But he says that, there's, it says that there's two witnesses because um, the Bible continually talks about how um, have two two witnesses to validate something as true. So it's like what they're preaching is the truth. It's validated because there's two of them, you know. And there's it, there's like five different scriptures or so that talk about having two witnesses present. Okay, so that's really interesting. It's like okay, well that makes sense. Uh, it talks about, like, the measurement of the temple and stuff, and it says, uh, you know, measure the temple. And uh, basically the idealist said that the measurements of the temple just shows, uh, the temple's the church, is what they said, and that God knows, you know, the exact measurements of the temple. He knows the exact number of people who are going to be saved, um, and, you know, none of them are going to be lost. Um and so when it says don't measure the court that's without or whatever, that's talking about, he said, the idealist person said that he interprets that to mean that that is people who are visually in the church, but they're apostates, okay? They're the false brethren and stuff. Those are the ones that are without the temple, and they're going to be trampled by the Gentiles, okay? So, uh, you know, they're trampled by the Gentiles because, you know, they're not truly in the faith, basically. So that's pretty interesting interpretation there. Um, I'm going to try to think about some other things that I read. Hmm. You know, it just talks about the, the years, the number of years and stuff is just um, to say that there's a there's like a definite time. It's not... You know, literally, that number of years doesn't really mean anything. It's just symbolically that there, that this is only going to last for a while. Oh, he also I also read about the beginning after the churches, after the messages to the churches, how um, you know Jesus starts opening the the seals, and uh, it's interesting. It talked about how they're saying who is worthy to open the seal and. And it's not saying that nobody is strong enough to open the seal, but nobody was worthy enough to open the seal, and only Jesus Christ, the Lamb, was worthy to open the seals. And the idealist said that he thinks that the seals are like the redemptive plan of God, or 
uh, some other people said that it could be the Book of Life. And it talks about how the first seal is like, um, there's writing on the front of it and the back of it. Or, you know, it's like completely covered. And so someone said if it's the Book of Life, it could be because, you know, there's so many names that it couldn't fit on the only the front side. Or um, if you look at it like the redemptive plan of God, then I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of drawing a blank here. Um, I'm just going off memory what I looked at really quick last night. You know what, I think I'm just going to say forget about it for now. So I just want to share those little points with you. Uh, very interesting, and I'm going to be looking at it more and more. And, uh, so, the idealist interpretation still strikes me as true. You know, the best, the better interpretation, and, um... And there could be some variances there within, you know, how different people interpret different things. Um, you know, there's still some boundaries, but there uh, also can be slightly different interpretations and stuff that people could see that could still be applicable. But anyways, um, I'm excited. I'm hoping uh, my next paycheck... I'm hoping to get a few more books that I've been wanting for like the past year. I've kind of had on my wish list that I've just, it's you know, not really important to get right away, but I figured once I work for UPS, I'm going to get them. And so I'm hoping that I will. And they're going to be really helpful for doing studies, uh, a lot easier. And, you know, like one of them is a big book on doctrine. That's going to be very interesting. Um, but, so, and, and another one's going to be on more logical fallacies and stuff and arguments and uh, apologetics. Um, and I was talking about how I started reading Mark, I read the first chapter, and I thought it was interesting how Jesus uh, silenced the demons. It said they knew who he was, so he silenced them. And, and also he heals somebody and he tells them not to go, you know, tell everybody what he did and everything. And so, you know, I kind of wonder why. And then there's a verse in the Old Testament how it talks about how he, when Jesus comes and stuff, he won't blow a trumpet and stuff. Like, he won't draw attention to himself. It's not all about him. He gives the glory to the Father. So, so I think that's one reason why he silenced them and he didn't want people to go and blurt out his name and everything. Because um, he wants the, the glory to go to the Father. But also, maybe just not to draw a whole lot of attention to himself, like, physically like you know he had plans he had to do he couldn't just be crowded by people all the time so and also that would also bring even more opposition to him but I think it's mostly just to show his uh, humility and stuff and um, but I guess that's all I'm going to say for now <laughs> I'll look at some stuff today I might make another video but Still, not really making on plan on making a lot of quality videos until after work, but then hopefully a lot of them will come out and make a lot of progress. And I haven't been using this curtain because of the lighting. I don't know if I said this before, but a brother told me that I should get a uh, like a fluorescent light before, and I didn't think it would be enough, so I got these other lights. Um, I got two of them because I thought it would be like good to have lights from different angles. I thought it would be better. But uh, I'm glad that I got them. I use them for the whiteboard and stuff. But when I use it with this background sheet, it makes like some weird shadows. So I'm hoping probably next payday too, I'm finally going to get like a fluorescent light. And I'm going to hope that it will just put the shadow behind me and I might start using this again. Now it's all wrinkly because I've had it all rolled up. But... I'll have to get it straightened out, but uh, yeah, this room does need some work. Somebody said something about that. <laughs> it needs the floor worked on hopefully this summer, and hopefully get the door up soon and get it all fixed up in here, but uh, I plan to use the curtain anyways when I'm making videos at the computer desk like this. It's just the lighting's weird, and anyway... I just woke up pretty much and got out of bed and getting everything together. 
so. Um, I guess that's it. God bless. <laughs>